hundred light years from Earth. Orion's dark cloud. Dust and gas, so dense it's shrouding us, shutting us off from the universe outside. There, deep inside, a ball of light, pulling the dust and gas towards it, heating up, merging into a ball of burning hot gas. Like a star, like our sun, in miniature. It's millions of degrees inside it, so hot it's beginning to trigger nuclear reactions, the kind that keep our sun shining. Making energy, radiation, light. A star is being born. Or rather, stars. Orion's dark cloud is a vast star factory. We're witnessing the birth of the future universe. We've come to expect hostile horrors, but we're discovering one of the universe's greatest creative wonders, star birth. Perhaps we spoke too soon. Jets of gas, exploding outwards at 200,000 kilometers an hour. Blasting dust and gas out for millions of kilometers. It's unbelievably violent, but look at the results. It's beyond words. Nebula, vast glowing clouds of gas hanging in space. With no wind out here, they'll take thousands of years to disperse. They seem to be forming a vast stellar sculpture. It makes you realize nature is more than a scientist, an engineer. It's an artist on the grandest of scales. We've seen some strange sights, but this is a masterpiece. A giant horse's head rearing up in space. Stars are born. Grow up, and then, then what? Do they die? Do they slip quietly into the night, or go out with a bang? Somewhere between here and the edge of the universe lies the answer. Nearly 4,000 light years further, luminous clouds suspended in space encircling what was once a star like our own sun. All that's left of it are these brightly colored gases. Elements formed by nuclear fusion deep inside the star, released into space on its death. Green and violet, hydrogen and helium, the raw materials of the universe. Red and blue, nitrogen and oxygen, the building blocks of life on Earth. For us to live, stars like this had to die. The oxygen in our lungs, the nitrogen in our DNA. It was all produced by nuclear fusion in stars that died long before the Earth was even born. We are made of stellar nuclear waste. Our family tree begins here.
At its heart, the ghost of a star. It's a white dwarf. White, hot, small, but unbelievably dense. In the star's dying moments, its atoms fused and squeezed together, making it so dense that just a teaspoon of this white dwarf would weigh one ton. It's a chilling premonition of our sun's fate. Six billion years from now, it'll become a white dwarf. Its death will herald the end of life on Earth. It makes you wonder how many other worlds have been and gone. Stories left untold. Celestial books lost forever. But the greatest story of them all is still to be told. We must go back through time to the very first chapter to tell the story of how the universe began. The scattered remains of a dead star. A nebula. The Crab Nebula. We're 6,000 light years from home, deep inside a stellar graveyard. We've learned so much, seen things we'd never have believed possible. Now, sights like this, wonders once beyond imagination, we take in our stride. We're ready, ready to face whatever lies ahead, determined to reach the edge of the universe. It looks dead, but maybe this is just the calm after the storm, after a massive explosion, powerful enough to turn a huge star into a cloud of dust and gas, a supernova. The eye of the storm, a spinning, pulsating star, a pulsar. Gravity must have squeezed the giant star's core down to this. It's just 20 kilometers across, unimaginably dense. One pinhead of this would weigh hundreds, maybe millions of tons. As it shrank, like a figure skater spinning on the spot, arms outstretched, then pulling them in, it began to spin faster. Two beams of light, energy, radiation, spinning 30 times a second, powering the huge cloud of dust and gas. There's so much radiation here, more even than on the sun. That was easily the deadliest thing we've encountered so far. Once, 